JBN, we keep you informed. Grandmother and a toddler killed in St. Elizabeth fire. A 73-year-old woman and her two-year-old granddaughter died when their home was destroyed by fire at Leeds, three miles south of Santa Cruz on Friday afternoon, police say. The victims have been identified as Pearl Eve and her granddaughter, Shankona Ennis. The tragedy occurred at about 3 p.m., police say. There's uncertainty as to how the fire started, but the police do not suspect foul play. There's speculation that Eve may have gone to sleep, leaving a cooking fire going. Man gets eight life sentences, must serve 66 and a half years before parole. Kemar Thompson, who shot and killed several people in separate incidents over three months, has been given eight life sentences and must serve a total of 66 and a half years before being eligible for parole. Thompson was charged with eight counts of murder, illegal possession of firearm, and robbery aggravation, was sentenced in the Home Circuit Court on Tuesday by Justice Lorna Shelley Williams. Following investigations by the police, Thompson was arrested. When apprehended, he gave a caution statement confessing to all eight murders which were committed with an illegal firearm. Thompson was 24 at the time of the commission of the offenses and previously pleaded guilty. An eyewitness told the court that on August 14, 2014, at approximately 6.57 a.m., she saw Thompson and the deceased, later identified as Carlton Blake, in the middle of the road in Pineapple Lane, Bogwalk, St. Catherine. She said Thompson pulled a firearm from his waist and shot Blake. In the second incident, the court heard that Thompson, along with accomplices, went to the Bowers Road, the main road in St. Catherine, on October 12, 2014, and robbed Courtley, Coburn, Craig Harris, and Carlton Scott. The men were on their way in a motor car with $1.5 million to a China Harbor Engineering Company site where they were set upon. All three were shot and killed by Thompson and the money taken from the car by the accused accomplice. Kirk Foote, a passerby who stopped to inquire what was happening, was also killed by Thompson after he was ordered out of his vehicle by the then accused. Days later, on October 22, 2014, at approximately 9 a.m. in Pineapple Lane, Bogwalk, St. Catherine, an eyewitness stated that she was at her home when she went out to her gate and saw Thompson dressed in a black hoodie shirt chasing two men. The eyewitness stated that while he was running, the portion of the woody that covered his head blew off, revealing his identity. Thompson ran into a yard after which explosions were heard. The eyewitness then walked to where she had heard the explosions and saw two men lying on the ground who were later identified as Norman Nolan and Patrick Cummings. Shortly thereafter, in the same area, explosions were heard and another man by the name of Matthew Taylor was found dead in the vicinity of Pineapple Lane in St. Catherine. At the sentencing hearing, Thompson's attorney, Ernest Davis, urged the court to hand down a light sentence, having regard to the age of the accused, the fact that he pleaded guilty, that he accepted responsibility for his actions, and that he was remorseful. In response, Justice Shelley Williams condemned Thompson's actions. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with 17 years and 7 months before parole in relation to the first murder. For the second incident, Thompson was sentenced to life imprisonment on four counts and 10 years imprisonment each on two other counts. He was ordered to serve a total of 40 years before being eligible for parole. In relation to the third murder, Thompson was sentenced to life imprisonment on three counts and will not be eligible for parole until he has served a total of 26 years and seven months. The sentences handed down in relation to the first and the three murders will run concurrently, while the sentences handed down on the second murder are to run consecutively with the others. Teacher pleads guilty to using metal pipe to injure student. A primary school teacher who was charged after using a metal pipe to injure one of his students has pleaded guilty. Jermaine Jones pleaded guilty to child abuse on Wednesday when he appeared before the St. Andrew Parish Court. He is to be sentenced on October 27. Mr. Jones was charged in May following an investigation into the incident at the Halfway Tree Primary School in St. Andrew. Prosecutors reported that on April 8, Jones, who is a teacher at the school, used the metal pipe to beat the child on his leg and buttocks. The mother of the child contacted the school about the matter and later filed a report with the police. Elderly farmer blamed crocodile for illegal gun in his possession. 
an elderly St. Elizabeth farmer who, when caught with an illegal firearm last year, told the police that he intended to use the weapon to shoot a crocodile that was on his farm. He has been fined over $1 million by a high court judge. The convict, 78-year-old Trevor Beeport of Middlesex in the parish, was sentenced on Wednesday after earlier pleading guilty to illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Presiding Judge Justice Chester Stamp ordered Beeport to pay a fine of $1 million or serve three years in prison for illegal possession of firearm. In relation to the ammunition charge, Beeport was fined $200,000. If the fines are not paid, he is to serve three years behind bars. The allegations were that during a police operation in St. Elizabeth last year, B. Put, while on his way to his farm, was stopped and searched. The illegal firearm and ammunition were found on the elderly farmer. He is alleged to have told officers that the firearm was intended to be used to shoot a crocodile that was on his farm. B. Put was subsequently arrested and charged. Police say two people in custody after $25 million robbery. Investigators say they are questioning two people in connection with a $25 million heist carried out by three gunmen in Trelawney last week. At the same time, a senior cop has expressed grave concern that criminals now have access to that quantity of cash. While I am happy that we did not have any loss of lives, I am very concerned that $25 million would have so easily gone into the underground and the criminal world. We do know that $25 million will serve to further the criminal enterprises of these groups and increase the level of violence, head of the Trelawney Police Division, Superintendent Kirk Ricketts lamented. The heist was carried out sometime after 10 p.m. one day last week. Police report that the gunmen invaded a house in Duncan's Hill that was occupied by a subcontractor and three workers employed on the construction site of a new hotel in the parish. The subcontractor had earlier that day withdrawn the cash from the bank to pay workers. According to the police, the gunmen took a bag containing the money. They did not hurt anyone during the robbery. On Wednesday, Superintendent Ricketts confirmed that two individuals have been accosted by the police and are being questioned. We think they might have something to do with it. They are suspected to be involved in the incident, he said. While it might be in his embryonic stage, I would say it's early days yet. But the investigation is running apace and we do hope to have a breakthrough soon, Rickett said. This robbery is theorized to have been committed by an organized group who had information about the movement of the money. We're currently in dialogue with the Counter-Terrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch as well as the St. James Police Division, Ricketts added. There is a 20% decline in the cases of robberies reported in the parish between January and July compared to the corresponding period last year. Superintendent Ricketts renewed a call for people transporting large sums of money to either contact private security or seek assistance from the police. Police Federation gets eight buses. Rank and file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, will now be able to travel to and from work in greater safety and comfort through the procurement of eight buses by the government. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson handed over the vehicles to the Jamaica Police Federation, JPF, at the Commissioner's Old Hope Road offices in St. Andrew earlier yesterday. According to Anderson, the presentation of the buses is in keeping with the JCF's welfare program for members. He noted that the objective is to ensure the well-being of the police as they work to keep the country safe. Anderson said that the government is committed to ensuring that police personnel are properly equipped to do their job. There is a procurement process taking place now to ensure that our members have the tools to do the job that we send them to do, he noted. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Federation, Sergeant Patray Rowe, expressed gratitude for the buses, noting that the members will be pleased. Kingston man on receiving stolen property charge gets $100,000 bail. 23-year-old laborer Cohen Jackson of Jonestown, Kingston 12, who is charged with receiving stolen property, has been granted $100,000 bail with a surety. Parish Judge Broderick Smith ordered Jackson to return to the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on October 4. 
Jackson was arrested and charged in April when the police found him in possession of a stolen motor car in the crossroads area in St. Andrew. It was reported that three men held up a man and robbed him of the motor car. An identification parade was held, but Jackson was not identified as being involved in the robbery. Attorney at law Hashford Meikle, in making the bail application, argued that the prosecution's case against Jackson was very weak. Meikle further said Jackson found himself in an unfortunate situation because of misplaced trust. He said about a week after the alleged robbery, Jackson was at a dance in his community. Meikle said Jackson felt hungry while at the dance and borrowed the motor car from a friend to purchase a meal in Crossroads. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.